Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to my channel. This is going to be a yes or no pick a card reading using the Rider Waite deck. And if you, even if you don't have a particular question in mind, you can just use this as a daily draw style reading. I'm going to talk a little bit about the energies of each card, but mostly this should be pretty quick. So we'll get right into it. The timestamps are down below in the description box and it's cards number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and number eight. I'll see you guys in your reading. Okay, pile number one. What do we got here? Eight of Cups. This is a yes if you're looking to start something new, especially if you guys are asking about any, like, a spiritual question. <laughs> um, if you're wondering if you should embark on a new journey, uh, leave something behind to turn your back on something, or if you need to start a new leaf. I really see this card as the kind of 40 days in the wilderness um, where you might need to be, you know, leaving some comforts behind, leaving some, even some people or things you care about behind, but you're kind of going off to gain new wisdom. This is almost like, almost like a little bit like the hanged man, except it's not, it's not so much of a weight card. I can tell you that this is a yes. Um, but if you are expecting anything to be happening immediately or if you're looking for like tangible physical results like right now, it's probably not going to happen that way. This this card is definitely uh, things are going to play out over the next month, I, I would say, with this. OK, card number two. Seven of Swords. This is a no. Um, this card is usually read pretty, like, people are pretty hard on the Seven of Swords. They really see it as, like, a deceit, like, you know, watch your back. People are lying to you or you're lying to yourself or you're being deceitful. Um, I tend to not read, like, that level of, like, you know, you've been a bad boy into tarot cards. Um, I see this more as somebody isn't seeing something clearly, like, and he's trying to get away with something even if he doesn't need to. Like, this guy is trying to steal a bunch of swords and he's carrying them by the blades and he thinks like what does he think he's getting away with that's sort of how how i see this he i think this person is really operating from a place of like lack mentality so if you you ask some kind of question going like um you know am i gonna have enough money to pay the bills uh am i gonna is this does this person you know love me back uh whatever it is I mean, the card, this is a no card, but I would also invite you to take a look at like your, what is the root of your question? Why are you asking this question? I would say with the seven of swords, um, the yes or no is almost irrelevant. The real issue here is why are you even asking the question? Because it seems to be coming from like a lack mentality, almost like a FOMO. This guy has FOMO like you would not believe. He is afraid of missing out and he's afraid of not having enough. Um, the thing is, guys, even though this card is a no, I think you're you're still going to have enough. Like, you're still going to be okay. Um, it just, you know, you might not get the million dollars that you want or you might not get that person that you want. But in the long run, everything's going to work out and you're going to get you're going to get through this kind of lack mentality and the scarcity mentality. And the sooner you can actually work through that energy of always worrying about not having enough. And this can be, you know not having enough food. And I actually know people like, you know, in developed in the developed world where there is, you know, no shortage of food. And, you know, even if, even if people are overweight, they worry about not having enough to eat. And that's a really weird thing to me. It's like your fridge is full of food, but you know, you're afraid that somehow you're going to run out. Like <laughs> it's that kind of thing. Like whatever it is, you're worried about not having enough of, you have enough of it. The universe is going to make sure you have enough, even if sometimes it's just barely enough to squeak by. This is an invitation to work through that. And the, th the funny thing is once you work through that scarcity mentality, you will enter a new flow of abundance. And that got pretty uh, detailed and um, kind of out there off of just the seven of swords, but that's really what I'm seeing here. And it must be relevant to somebody. Okay. Card number three, the emperor. This is a yes. This is a great, great card to be getting. Um, man, look at, he's holding an onk. He's got the rams on his, uh, on his throne there. I was, those details really jumped out at me. Um, I haven't actually looked at the Rider Waite deck in a, in a while. Um, so the emperor I really see as, 
he's the guy who kind of brings together the energy of all of the kings of all the suits. So you, whatever you guys have been doing, whatever you're asking about, you have worked through all four aspects of all four elements. You know, you've been through the mind, you've worked through your emotions, you've worked through your material world, and you've worked through like your passion and energy and manifestation of the wands. You've been through all of those and now you're bringing them all together. This is really like a concentration point, like the peak of the pyramid. So <laughs> I don't really want to say too much more than that. Whatever this is, this is a culmination point for you. Um, you're kind of sitting on top of the world. You've got your shit together. This is ES. This is a great card to get. There you go. <laughs> All right, card number four. Queen of Cups. So many tarot readers identify with this card. Um, I don't, actually. I don't feel like I'm a Queen of Cups at all. But the first thing I thought of when I saw this is that you guys are learning um, a new new kind of divination, whether that is tarot, and that's why you kind of stumbled across this video. Um, or even if you're getting into runes or scrying or whatever like that, um, this is a really good sign that that is a good path for you and that you're well suited to that. You're, that you're going to have luck in that path. Um, so this is the Queen of Cups is a yes. I don't think I mentioned that before. Um, the only kind of caveat to this is uh, don't let your emotions overwhelm you. Um, I don't really think that's going to be a problem with whatever you're asking about because the Queen of Cups would suggest to me that you should actually go with the flow with your emotions, that the situation that you are in is actually inviting you to, you know, make intuitive decisions, but intuitive, intuitive decisions based in your heart, based in your feelings, um, based in love. But always with, with these, uh, with the court cards, I always feel like they, they can be a little bit one dimensional. So watch out for like letting your feelings entirely overpower you you might you know if you need to bring a little bit of a logical perspective a little bit of your left brain in just to temper uh you know if, if you're feeling like your emotions are like a tidal wave like drowning you out or if you're trying to drown other people out with your emotions or if you're kind of trying to like distract yourself by like spiritual bypassing um i don't think this is the case for everybody but that's just something to watch out for whenever the queen of cups come up um she can be very like <laughs> like like an emotional wave and uh right now this is she's also an invitation to ride that wave and lean into that but you know you don't want to be drowned out by the wave so you know if you have to reach out to your left brain go ahead and do that but uh just to say again this is a yes for um for whatever you're asking about and it is leaning inviting you to lean into your emotions card number five Oh, weird. It's in reverse. Okay. <laughs> um, six of swords in reverse. Uh, it is, I'm just a little having to pause a moment here because this card really shouldn't be in reverse. It actually flipped. It popped out of the deck when I was uh, dealing out these eight cards. It popped out of the deck and it uh, landed face up and I picked it up turned it, you know, face side down and put it down. And apparently I did, I did that and turned it upside down, even though I was really careful not to do that. So when stuff like that happens to me, um, that's really just a message that's saying like, you know, this, I'm really am supposed to read this in reverse. So, uh, the six of swords is normally that, you know, journey of departure from leaving a painful past behind and going on to greener pastures. But since it's in reverse, you guys are really, really like resisting that change. There is some kind of change here that you guys don't want to hear about. <laughs> uh, you don't even want to consider it. And, uh, and it's a little bit odd because I think that past has been really like painful for you or it at least has become painful. And I think, you know, you need to leave it behind deep down, but you're just like, there's something stopping you. It's like, you're kind of stuck to it. Um, if this is a relationship, uh, like a toxic relationship that you know is not good for you, like you you need to do whatever you need to do to get out of that. Um, I keep hearing like cord cutting. Uh, you can look up cord cutting ceremonies. There's lots of different ways to do those. And there's lots of information about that on the internet. That might help you here if you're trying to break away ties from somebody. Um, and this can also be just leaving behind a previous identity you have within your own self. Um, if you're going through an awakening, which is a really common thing to be happening. You know, if you're somebody looking up tarot card videos um, and there's 
lots and lots of people are waking up right now and that can be really painful if you know you were really attached to your previous way of being now that all there's all this new crazy unexplainable shit happening to you you know you're seeing synchronicities everywhere you know maybe you're seeing spaceships um and you keep you know you keep going what well, on the one hand wow this is all really fun and interesting and fascinating and i want to lean into this but on the other hand you're going no this is crazy i'm losing my mind like this can't be happening this is all unbelievable you know you're not willing to believe yourself um you're not willing to be, like to trust into your own experience um so it is really hard actually for me to give a yes or no for this since it like the six of swords in reverse i mean honestly i know you came here for a yes or no but i don't I'm really being kind of guided to tell you that the message here is neither a yes nor a no. The message here is you know what you need to leave behind and you need to leave it behind. I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, card number six. Ace of Swords. Somebody is having a new beginning and somebody is slicing away the bonds of their past. And this is a yes. Um, aces, I think, are always yet. <laughs> they're always yeses. Aces are great. This is uh, especially for any kind of question asking about a new beginning or a new start, a new venture, a new project. The Ace of Swords, to me, specifically talks about a new idea or a new mental paradigm. And as I'm looking at this hand wielding this sword, this actually this sword that is crowned almost that looks like holly. I feel like you guys are wielding this sword. And I'm just kind of hearing, make sure you wield this, like, for good. You have a lot of power in your guys' hand, a lot of potential. And, you know, this blade, this sword here, this Ace of Swords is two-sided. It's a double-edged sword. So you just want to be a little bit discerning about kind of where you're aiming that thing. <laughs> and, you know, make sure you're sheathing it when you're not using it. Um... Not that I really have a lot of uh, worry about what you guys are doing with this sword or how this new project is going to go for you guys. Um, really a lot of positive energy here. Just a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a vibe of saying, like, don't get too carried away. You know, take, you know, don't be afraid to go in those baby steps and take your time. You don't need to go charging and rushing ahead, you know, because you could end up, you know, tripping on your sword and stor so <laughs> storb. <laughs> You could end up tripping on your sword and stabbing yourself in your foot or, um, you know, tripping over your words like I literally just did, you know. So I don't think there's, just to be clear, I don't think there's any like deadly or really serious like negative energy surrounding this. It's just a little bit of, you know, take it easy, be discerning and be careful with what you're doing as you charge off into this new future. But this is a yes and go for it. All right. Card number six, the tower. Okay, you guys, <laughs> this, uh, I don't, honestly, uh, if you guys have noticed, I almost never get major arcana in my yes or no's. Um, the tower almost defies a yes or no, because I would like really need to know specifically your question, because um, the tower, as you know, you guys probably know, like, just look at these people, this tower is getting zapped with lightning it's exploding at the top and people are like flying out of it i don't know if they jumped or if they're falling you know the tower is that all famous tower moment where your foundations are crumbling your life is getting leveled and then you're going going to be having a new start and i know a lot of people hate to see the tower card but honestly uh i just had a tower moment like over the weekend and I really learned to, to like love the tower. When I see it, I'm like, yeah, bring it. Like, this is like, you know, I got this. I can do this. Bring it on because I want to reach the next level of transformation. Really, it's a card of like leveling up. So if you've been asking about like, will things stay the same? This is a no. This is an absolute no. But if you've been asking, uh, are things going to like transform? Then this is a yes. So the yes or no here really depends on your question and you're going to have to like, you know, use your own intuition to, to filter that through. But basically whatever you're asking about, nothing is going to be the same again, but, and things might get worse before they get better, but trust me, guys, they're going to get better. The tower, because the, in the, in the major arcana, what comes after the tower is the star. And the star is such a healing card and it's such that energy of like, you know, a, like a star fallen to earth. 
um, bringing, bringing in that cosmic energy, um, you know, from the skies down into the ground. Um, and I know we're talking about the tower here, but with the tower, I sometimes always lean into the star card, which comes after it, because in those tower moments, what gets you through, like losing your job, going through a divorce, um, you know, having to put your dog down, uh, whatever like tragedy is striking you and whatever seems I mean, what what is horrible, it is horrible. You don't need to pretend that, you know, what's happening to you isn't painful and isn't um, convoluted and isn't, you know, really hard to get through. But what helps you get through it is that long, long view where you see, where you can try to see where this is going and you know this this won't last forever. Eventually, like, the storm will pass and, you know, you'll have clear ground, clear fertile ground in order to grow whatever it is that is coming next. For example, if you got this card and you're asking about a current relationship that you know is on the rocks, this would probably mean that that relationship is going to, well, it doesn't, the, the relationship doesn't need to be coming to an end, but if it doesn't end, it's going to have like a major, like, hurdle, something's going to happen and it's going to transform. So I would say either you guys are going to break up and then, you know, you're going to go through a period of turmoil, but then you're going to meet like, you know, your soulmate or your relationship is going to go through like some serious like crisis. Maybe you guys like really go through a big fight or you start going to counseling together, um, you know, or some big secret comes to light. But, you know, if you guys are really meant to be together, that's going to eventually work out and will have all been for the best. Like maybe you guys finally will figure out all of the issues um, that you've been going through and kind of the problems in your relationship. The tower card could just signal that 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 is going to get cleared up, but it's just not going to be easy, right? But then once once that settles, once the dust settles on that, then, you know, your relationship will, will be given like a new birth. So, you know, don't get too attached to any particular outcome when the tower comes up. Just know that there's going to be an upheaval, but it's, you know, it's a lot like the death card. There's going to be that in the long, long run, this is going to work out for the better and you're going to see a new rebirth and a new world after you survive this and you will i know you will i get the tower card i've had it lots over the past year and i've survived all of those ups and downs so i know you guys will get through this too all right last one card number eight queen of swords you know i almost want to say this is a no <laughs> you know queens are, are great cards um but i was actually just receiving a message about the queen of swords this morning um, I saw one of like my most respected and beloved like tarot readers talking about how the Queen of Swords is the archetype of the widow, uh, you know, where she's like lost her husband and, you know, now she's ruling the kingdom and uh, and she's become like the ice queen, you know, never, never swayed by emotions, but also like never touched by them. So since I like literally just was thinking about that like an hour ago and now I get this card here, I'm going to. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow my gut here and say that in this particular instance, the qu this Queen of Swords is a no. Um, and it, to me, it's really speaking to... <sighs> Have you guys been numbing your emotions out? Have you been ignoring your emotions? Ignoring your emotions? Have you been like spiritual bypassing? Have you been, you know, numbing yourself out with drugs or alcohol or just... Even through all of the years of your entire life, have you come to think of yourself as a person who like doesn't have emotions or isn't very feeling when really back in the youngest days of your childhood, you were just such a loving, imaginative, intuitive creature. And you've like, like kind of the trauma of all of your life has like iced that out of you. That's what I'm getting here. So to answer your question, it's a no, but I think to turn it into a yes is you need to be moving on from this queen of swords and you need to be getting back in touch with your emotions and with your intuition. You know, for me, this is a reminder that you don't have to do everything by yourself and not everything has to be logical and rational. You know, you don't need to totally embody this queen of swords all the time. Although she absolutely like has positive, positive traits that I love. And I actually normally really identify with the queen of swords. Um, but of course all the cards have, like a scale, you know, they all have, you know, higher evolutions and lower evolutions to them and different levels of their energy. And, um, right now her, the queen of this queen of swords, her more negative attributes are coming through for me. So that's what I'm going to go with. So this is a no and guys just, uh, 
Follow the breadcrumb trails that lead you back to your own heart. That's all I have to say about that. I'm going to leave it at that.